Live once again with another edition of the Cheap Heat Productions Wrestling Podcast. My name is Jack Kilby, Executive Vice President of Great North Wrestling. We have a guest on tonight who is an ECW original, but over and above all of that, who had a standout career in ECW as well as Puerto Rico and other points in between. He is my partner on the Shooting from the Hip podcast, which I'm sure our viewers are familiar with. He is the one and only the king of the streets, the kingpin, Angel Medina. But before we get to to Angel, <laughs> I, I feel it's customary to introduce Maurice, the man from the Cheap Eat Productions, the man who whose show this is. Maurice, welcome to your show, sir. I, you know that's actually becoming pretty pretty funny every time. I just I <laughs> I, 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 I always see it coming, but I'm laughing at the same time. <laughs> Guys, I think the best way to start this actually, while we have the two of you here, like is just to talk about shooting from the hip. Where where you guys can get it? What what do you talk about? We'll start it off that way. Yeah, Jack, you tell them. You're more articulate than I am. Well, that 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 is a fluid construct for sure, depending on the day. But actually, Angel and and I know each other from uh, about a decade back when he was headlining a promotion called Hardcore Road Trip out of London, Ontario, Canada. It was portrayed as ECW in Canada, and the Kingpin was the the first champion and still the defending champion. So. We, we've known each other a long time and decided, uh, well, gee whiz, about a year ago to, to do a podcast where it's a look at some topics that, that maybe aren't covered in, in other locations and just his, his take on uh, issues of the day. And that is available on thehannibaltv.com. We're up to about, I don't know, 15 to 20 episodes and we have a big christmas episode coming up that we'll look at yeah, yeah, yeah. christmas angles in wrestling so i really enjoy it and the fans do as well of course angel has a perspective on the business from from a first hand that that a lot of the fans are are very interested in we get a lot of interaction there as well so that's on the hannibal tv.com right on right on man i greatly appreciate you putting the show over you know you know what i'm doing right now what, sir? Balancing my checkbook. That's why I have my eyes always. <laughs> I got to get that. Payment. That's my ECW royalties. I'm just looking at my, my stocks, you know. The, <laughs> so. the same amount of money that we get from YouTube, right? Yeah, that's right. You know, oh, that's big, right. Big books. Big books. <laughs> you know. So so just curiosity, curiosity, Maurice, how big is wrestling? I, mean, I know MMA is big over there, too, in Ireland. But, um. The, the organizations, any big promotions out there? The biggest promotion that we have in, in Ireland now is called OTT Wrestling, Over the Top Wrestling. Um, they're one of the biggest in Europe now. Um, Ireland's actually having a little bit of a re wrestling resurgence at the moment. Got lots of young talent coming through. And if you look even to WWE television, we've got Finn Balor there and Sheamus and Becky Lynch and Valkyrie and NXT. We even got an Irish commentator on SmackDown now. Um one of our top guys has just signed with Pro Wrestling Noah over in Japan. And I can tell you from going to shows over here that there's a lot of talent going to come through. So we're That's actually cool. in a very good position here. You also you had Hornswoggle. <laughs> so you he's, not, he's, not, he's, not officially, he's not officially Irish, but we, we'll take him. We'll take him. And, of course, we had mm. Fit Finley as well. Fit Finley. Yeah, I love Fit Finley. That dude is tough. Yeah. And you his know. son is uh, making a name for himself as well, correct? Is he, is, in is Japan. He tough, is, he, is he tough like his dad? Big time. David Finley's his name. I've seen some of his work, and they, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree there. Yeah, no, no, that's cool, man. Fit Finley was an awesome wrestler back then, and he's got a lot of knowledge to help his son be successful, you know? Yeah. One thing I always like to ask Kingpin is like, how did you decide that you wanted to be involved in this crazy world? I mean, it was just a, it was just a, a typical fan since I was a kid. Uh, I loved wrestling. Uh, what got me into wrestling was uh, my friend in junior high school um, had a, a pro wrestling illustrated magazine. And he told me that this um, on TBS, you know, clash the first clash of champion is going to happen with uh, Ric Flair and Sting and you should check it out. 
So I checked it out. Saw you know the guy from one, uh, the Wonder Years, the guy from Leave It a Beaver, and Missy Hyatt. Right? Was it Missy Hyatt at the table? It was Jason Hervey, and uh, he was dating Missy Hyatt for a while. <laughs> yeah, I just thought I remember seeing her there. But yeah, that's that that what got me into the wrestling. Um, you know, fix, you know, is that, that Starcade, I mean, Starcade, that Clash of Champions. And then I started watching like Lethal Lottery and, you know, um, War Games, you know, and I'm talking the real War Games, not the WWE. It's okay. But when you look at the classics, you yeah. know, those are the things that just like really, it was just, you know, still got me excited. I, I love watching it to this day, you know, even though I know the whole, it's like re reciting a movie, you know, you know, the words and the lines and stuff is just like, I just can't get enough of it. Cause you always catch something that you missed. Mm -hmm. And do you keep in, do you keep in contact with today's product? Do you like to watch any of it? No, I really do. I watch it. Like, um, I'm not gonna lie. I watch it like sporadically because in this business, I feel like my trainer, you know, like when the, when the old fighters like, oh, what, what I, my day, we didn't put up with that shit. And then, you know, of course, at my era, I was like, oh, whatever, old man. And now I see what they're talking about. And I just don't like how the business is just going. I mean, nothing bad. It's just it's all about high spots, getting my shit in, you know, not really trying to protect the wrestler. A lot of injuries doing bigger spots, you know, I mean, every time is a bigger spot. And then they got to go. We got to top the, that, that one. You know, I remember Tommy Dreamer told me, like, you know, they he said, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have Raven shoot me in the ring. <laughs> you know, shoot me in the arm. You know, that would be great. That would be great for TV. It's good for business. So, you know, that's what I'm thinking. Like, what's the next thing they're going to do? You know, shoot somebody or, you know, harpoon somebody, you know, or is, um, you know, uh, um, it, you know, like, now I forgot his name. Um, The CT is kicking in. Uh, not Finn Balor. Uh, he's with... um. Oh my God! What's his name? Uh, big Jordan old... Devlin. No, no, it'll, it'll hit me. But anyway, he can you know, come, you know, what's the next thing you do? Stab somebody with a sword, you know, um, in the ring and stuff. I don't know, man. It's just, it's just. We already saw that with uh, Adam Page and Swerve uh, Strickland in AEW recently. That Texas Death Match that involved drinking blood. I mean, I don't know oh, if you yeah. caught that or not. No, I never oh, caught that. Wow. Was it real uh, blood? Yeah. yeah. It was it was real blood and it, and a lot of folks were going, well, what can they do next? And I think you're not far off at all that the, you know, the, the next logical conclusion will be something involving a, I don't know, a firearm or whatnot. So you're, now you're the next thing, they get, the next thing they're going to do, I already got it. Right. So it's going to be like a, almost like a, you know, like a pole match type of thing. And you know, you shit, the, you shit in the guy's mouth, man. You know, when you go to the dentist and they put that, <laughs> They put that thing in your mouth, and you know, and he's like, you put that shit in his mouth, tie him up in a straight jacket, and then shit in his mouth, bro. Who gives well, a shit? Uh, I think XPW they they did something uh, close to that anyway with uh, Rob Black, but but you bring up uh, you bring up a good point. You were trained under the great uh, Johnny Rods, and it's a it's a different it's a different mindset. Do you do you see the 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 product that you do watch? the modern product, so to speak, do you see the, the deficiencies in the training process there that you're talking about psychology largely being, being lost and, and these ridiculous stunts, that wasn't something that you were taught. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, it's just Johnny, it was just an old school mentality, you know, and you had to, you, you know, everybody was tough from Vito to Taz to, to Mondo, um, Hugh Morris, all those guys were tough, you know, and, you know, you didn't want to rub them the wrong way or you got beat up. You know, it's, you know, Johnny was a shooter for WWE, you know, at the time. And, you know, um, Billy Robinson and Carl Gotch. And, you know, those are guys with like, you know, Luthez, Catch Can Wrestling. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just these guys are just pretending to, I hate saying pretending to be wrestlers, but they never really did anything to say, you know, I, I'm, I'm meant to be in this business. You know what I mean? It's just um, Joey Janela and yeah, you got some good guys, you know, um, MJF and all that. And he, he, you know, but it's just when I watch it, it's just, um, cause if I was in the ring with fucking Perry jungle boy, I, I would have probably, you know, be, not beat the shit out of him, but put him in his place, you know, not try to kill him, but I'm not going to just, 
let him take liberties with me and then tell me, well, we should do this. And I'm like, dude, you only been in the business for X amount of years. Who are you to tell me anything? You know, back in the days, you've got clock. Hey, man, when I get in the ring, we're going to do this. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like Jack. Be like, all right, well, yeah, yeah. Once we get out there, we'll, you know, we'll do that and then change the whole shit around and beat the shit out of them. It's just, um, I don't know. It's a business. I just don't watch it anymore. I, I just watch reruns. Seriously, I watch like old ECW, old WWE, Attitude Era. You know, that's it, man. Maybe I catch it once in a while when Nana tells me, hey, man, check out the Tonight Show. And I'm like, all right, you know. Or like right now, I just saw something that the um, that uh, the you know they're bringing in the Von Erics to uh, AEW for like AEW. Uh, yeah, just for that promoting the movie, you know, mm-hmm. you know. So I might watch that. But mm-hmm. but you 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 also highlight a, a fact that the business as uh, not Maurice because he's a young fella, but you you and I uh, grew up on and 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 watched and admired is is not the same as it is now. No, it's not, man. That's what I'm saying. It's just, I mean, don't get me wrong. There was some like we always talk about it, but it, I mean, they had some shit matches. You know, you know, um, Halloween Havoc with Abdullah the Butcher. That was horrible. You know, I mean, yeah, we had some clusters. You know, we had the Ninja Turtles. We had uh, Phantasmo. We had um, uh, Max Moon. I mean, we had our moments, you know, but but then they got back to the what was wrestling, you know. So, I don't know. Like I said, man, I just – Dusty Rhodes, Nikita Koloff, Lex Luger, those guys were the, the bomb, man, back in the days. Jake Walker, who – is a uh a stalwart of the Hannibal TV. He coordinates a lot of the on-air talent that that we see being interviewed as saying uh Angel and the Baldies versus the Gangsta was the first ECW feud I ever watched and the subway vignettes were fire. Do you have any we're gonna of course talk about New Jack, but do you do you have any uh memories of that oh, particular yeah. sequence in particular? Yeah, I mean the subway, the subway uh, vignettes were awesome because we Paul was like, "Hey man, you um, you know, you need to meet me in the Bronx, you know, at this location." So I had to meet up with Devito, and Devito, um, this is before GPS, of course. Um, we had to drive up there to, to you know to the Bronx, and Devito was like, "Holy shit, I never been to the Bronx," you know. <laughs> so, so it was funny, and uh, I mean, I remember the whole thing, you know. I mean, we had to cut different segments. And that's how I got the Kingpin Monarchy because I was wearing a baseball hat. If you watch the video, I'm wearing a baseball hat and it's in graffiti and it says Kingpin on it because Paul went up to me and goes, he goes, hey, what's that say on your hat? And I was like, oh, it says Kingpin. Oh, that's perfect. That's all he said. <laughs> and that's when the when they started on TV, you know, they were like, oh, and here he is, the Kingpin Angel and the mouthpiece DeVito. And, and I'm like, holy shit, he used the – and I, that's why I figured, oh, that's why he said, oh, that's perfect. You know, so – that's how I got the monarchy. But yeah, it was fun, man. We had a blast. Jack, Jack is Jack was always good to me, man. I love him. You know. Did I, I know we've we've talked about this before, but since you brought up uh Jack, did you have any I I, I know you, you caught the episode of the dark side of the ring. Did did you think that that uh encapsulated his his legacy? Because it seems to me that Jack was somewhat misunderstood, and correct me if I'm wrong, but if you treated him with respect, you got that back, and that's a very uh, street-oriented uh, value system. But if you mess with him, well, you, you kind of found out too. Yeah, he, he, you know, like, I don't know. I never rubbed Jack the wrong way, but uh, people just rub. I mean, sitting there, and I'm like, I wonder how the hell he rubbed Jack the wrong way. Like, Jack was one of those guys that – but it never happened to me, first of all. But I'm just saying he was one of those guys that – you could be like joking with him, having a good time, eating buffalo wings and French fries, you know. Um, and um, and Jack says a joke, and he goes, "Man, boy, boy, you funny, you funny, man, boy, you really funny." And then, like two days later, you know, Jack would be like, well, "Did you call me boy? Why'd you, you know, why, you know, like that? Like he'll come out of nowhere and like, damn, dude, that was two days ago. Now you're like realizing and all upset because he called you boy. He didn't mean it that way, you know, but stuff like that, you know, you just, uh, certain people had to like, be careful with what they said. Uh, I guess I didn't really say much to Jack, so I never really rubbed them the wrong way. You know, I got, I actually, <clears throat> I actually asked him to be on the podcast and I was just on my phone there looking back through my messages and I did 
it was in 2021 i sent him a message he said hell yes bro i'll come on your podcast my fans are the shit and i love to talk to them that's the type of that's the type of guy that now i only had a brief interaction with him but i thought he's pretty cool shit. hey if you want i could go and you know, dig him up and we could just do the show <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm, right. <laughs> and I'm sure, and I'm sure he'd be fucking cool with that as well. That Put it this way: there's a week before. when Chris Candido died, I wasn't there, but this is the story that came back. That ball said that he was gonna like drop an elbow on him in the coffin. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and the guy said, "Hey, man, don't do that." He goes, "You will pop for it. You would enjoy it." He goes, "Yeah, man, but it's not appropriate." You know, and like, I mean, wrestlers have a six inch humor, you know, like Mike Bell. You know, guys remember Mike Bell? The dog Mike Bell. Yeah. He, um, when he passed away, of course, I didn't go and I called, uh, DeVito and I'm like, hey, man, you know, uh, how, you know, how was the funeral? You know, he goes, well, they, you know, he's cremated. And I said, well, how was the funeral? He goes, man, that was the biggest house he ever drew. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, that's awesome. And I know Mike would have popped for that one. Yeah, the biggest crowd he ever drew, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we have a warm Ball. sense of humor in this business. You know. Balls, ball. I heard a story about balls when uh, I met Sonny at an autograph kind of signing thing over here about 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And she was telling me a story. She tried to ring Balls Mahoney, but he didn't answer the phone. But he, he said that he had the spirit of Chris Candido in his house. He said it was <laughs> a physical thing. It was just there. That's like saying, like, the, the I saw the Roddy Piper said that, uh, that Adrian Adonis' spirit was in his house, that he woke up and he saw Adrian Adonis. I mean, I, I don't even know why I saw it. I know it's one of those ghost things. But, hey, man, I mean, they were close. I mean, they wrestled in high school. Bill Wiles wrestled them. You know, they were all in the same fold during that time. So, yeah, I mean, I understand, man. They were close, you know. Balls, Axel, all those guys. I miss them. And what we're did you excited. To, sorry. Mm -hmm. We're, I was just going to say we're excited to have Johnny Candido coming up on on this podcast as well. Do you do you have any memories of Chris though, Kingpin? Yeah, I mean he was a nice guy. I mean, um, I mean we didn't really talk too much because again, um, I wasn't. I'm saying it wasn't part of the clique, but once he came in, he was like hanging out with Axel and you know and certain people that he was with back then. And of course he was nice to me, but like I said, we didn't hang out. You know, he was real cordial. I mean, I got some funny stories, but you know, that's a little private. So I'll tell you after all after the show and stuff. But um, but um, yeah, man. Like I said, he was a good guy. Like there was a lot of good guys that came through the locker rooms. You know, you know that I miss. Kid Cash was awesome. Danny Roadkill. You know, Chili Willie. You know, just all those guys, man. With you know, family. Yeah. Assuming you've seen the news of Sonny a couple of weeks ago and she actually, in her defense, tried to kind of bring it back to the moment where Chris passed away, which I Fuck thought was that. interesting. Yeah. Bullshit. If, yeah. When your life is on the line and you're in front of that magistrate, you'd be like, yo. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's trying to pull. Again, I don't care about her. I, I, mean, I don't have heat with her, but I'm just saying. You did the crime. You're gonna do the time. You had so many opportunities yeah. to get yourself taken care of. Now you want to stand in front of the judge and go back in time hey, because of this situation. No, bitch. You needed to fucking get your shit right. You had tons of opportunity. WWE would have sent you to the to any type of program you wanted to. Yeah. And now that you're like 235 pounds, you know now you're just worried that like you know when you come out now you're gonna be a counselor. Why would I want to have you counsel my ass? You know you couldn't get your life straight. And the only reason you're straight now is because you're 60. Wait a minute. In 15 years, I'll be 60. I mean, like, late, yeah, she ain't going to come out till she's 67, so I'll be hitting my 70s. You know what I mean? Like, now that you saw Jesus, now you found Christ, you know, after you, you know, been, been somebody's bitch for 17 years, washing their underwear, making them ramen noodle sandwiches and all that stuff, and now you're telling me, you know, now, oh, man, you know, like, like Vic Grimes. Like, you know, Vic Grimes is religious now. Yeah, of course you're religious, motherfucker. After you fell off that scaffold and survived, I'll be praying to Jesus all the damn time. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> you know, but it took that fall. It's the same thing, man. That, you know, it's just she, she, she's a, she's a work of art, man. And like I said, I feel a little bit sorry for her because she's a, you're like one of us. And but she, like I said, she done it to herself. And it's not like one time, two times. It's like quadrillions of times that she got opportunity chances. Yeah. She just had to kill somebody to get locked up. 
Yeah, I think some people change, but I feel with her, it's it it was all an act, you know. And I think the judge seen through that, obviously. Oh, it is an act, man. Because I'm telling you, when when that time comes when she's come out, she's gonna be like that old lady in Titanic. It was 80 years ago to this day, <laughs> you know. Like fuck you, bitch. You know that's when I dig up New Jack and toss him off the roof and land on her. <laughs> you know, I just she's a trip, dude. Like she, I said. She, she might come on the show, Jack, maybe if we're still doing this when she gets out, you know, because I don't think she'd be able to go back on OnlyFans at that point. Dude, and you know the fucked up part? She, she was hot. But remember this philosophy. Yep. You know, look at, you, look at your wife and look at her mother. If her mother's a train wreck, that's what she's going to look like in 30 years. So now, like, you look, I mean, but I'm saying she was smoking high. You, everybody would have been proud to have her on the arm. Now, look at her now. Every time her fucking legs move, you hear that balloon sound. You know, when you grab a balloon and rub them together, you're like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can hear it coming. You know, I have no sympathy for her, man. I crack jokes all day about her. She deserves it. Now, that's that's a new one. But before before we leave her, as a topic, did you did you not when when she was in ECW with with uh, Chris? Did, what do you think of the allegations? I, I don't know whether it's allegations or whether it falls into the 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 area of unknown that she was being worked by Paul to uh, put flights, etc., hotels on her credit card, and that's really the start of her financial difficulties. I heard that story, but I never, you know, they never told, you know what I mean? It never came out. I heard it, but I don't see Paul. I don't know, man. It just, I mean, if Paul came up to me and said, hey, can you fuck? No, I'm still trying to cash this check that you just gave me. And you want me to put it on my credit card? You know? Rubber. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, hell no. I mean, I love Paul, but hell no, I will never. Um, let me tell you, you know, I'm going to give you a sunny story. I never told you this story. So when we were at ECW doing the house show, and this is a true shoot, I'm being honest, um, I went to the back of the locker room for whatever reason. I guess I had to talk to Paul or something, and I'm standing there. DeVito was next to me, and uh, Franny's talking, and Sonny's sitting there with, um, with a foot up on crossing her legs, and she's peeling off the calluses off her damn foot. You know, because they have that little thing. It was like a blade. You put a blade in it, and it's just... You scrape off the calluses. But when she had, she left up a leg. I'm looking and I'm like, and you see this big red blood spot in her panties. And I'm like, really? You know, the image of this beautiful woman. Now this is a, all. And that's all I remember now. That's, this is a true story, dude. And I said, Dorita, did you just see that shit? And he goes, he's just like, well, just whatever, dude. You know, and, and that's why when people go, oh my God, you guys have been with um, miscongeniality. Or um, you've been with so-and-so, you know, hung out with them. Oh, shit, they must so hot. No, motherfucker, those are the boys. Those are the most nastiest motherfuckers on the planet. When you don't see them with makeup or they shit with the door open or they don't flush <laughs> or or um, they're farting around you. But then they, once, they, once the curtain hits and they're getting, you know, painted up beautifully, everybody, oh, my God, I love them. I'm like, uh, they're just one of the boys, you know. So you were around Lita too. I didn't know this. This is hot news. You didn't know that? Nope. Miss Congeniality was, Lita, right? Yeah, man. Now I got to show you a picture. Me and Lita, I was Lita's first um, tryout match with me versus, me versus Big Vito in Winst in, in Virginia. And um, and uh, it went so well that Paul gave her a job on the spot because what we did. And um, hold on, where is it? You've been kayfaving that kingpin. Oh, I, mean, I brought it up many times. You know, I'll find a picture and I'll show it to you. But yeah, it she, you know, she and I'm in her book. If you look at a book, she mentions that story, and it's in. I know. haven't read her book. Is it worth uh, checking out? It's all right. I mean, it's not like it's just, you know you're going to be up at night with a flashlight in under the blankets and wife's like, hey, turn off the lights. Oh, I can't put this book down, man. <laughs> it's a page turner. <laughs> No, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a toilet, you know, sitting on the toilet, while, you know, and getting that, you know, getting it in, you know. Like I said, I love her to death. She's 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 awesome, you know. 
what was she like to work with in the professional capacity then? She was awesome, man. I have nothing negative about her. She is, she was a class act, man. You know, you know, I'm trying to find that picture, but yeah, I mean, she's. Did you see a uh, Hall of Fame potential in her at that point in time? Because that would have been what? How how much longer before she went to WWF to manage uh, SA Reels? Um, she, she was with us for quite a while. Um, but then uh, once um she, she once she got picked up, I mean. It was a wrap, you know, mm. and I'm happy for her. she was very, she was very talented. She deserved everything in regards to um, what happened. You know, I'm happy for her. You, and she you always met- said- <clears throat> go, ahead. go ahead. No, no you go ahead. ahead. No, no, I'm good. You, you you mentioned royalties there, and I don't I don't want to go into like facts and figures, but what way did royalties change, if any way? I got a better know, chance of being part being royalty in England. Before I get any real royalties from anybody else, I'd be like, "Sir Kingpin, Dub D," you know that. That's the truth, man. I didn't get shit. Yeah, but you're you part of the uh, video game too. Yeah, I'm part of the video game. Did you get paid out from that? Fuck no. That that video mm. game was um, the money that Paul got from the video game. Kind of like, uh, almost, I'm not saying like money laundering, but he was like, I'm going to use this money to pay pay for this pay-per-view and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I mean, nah, man, it's just, uh, I was happy to be in the video game, but a lot of people think like, man, dude, you probably got paid. I didn't get paid shit. I got like M&Ms and, um, and a bottle of water because the people there were very, very nice. The people for uh, a video acclaim. game. Acclaim. Bro, mm-hmm. I'd never been treated that way like, it's just weird when you go in there and you go, is there anything you need? No, I'm good. Are you hungry? No, I'm okay. We have some sparkling water here if you partake. I don't really drink sparkling water. I usually drink like flavored salsa water. Felipe, go to the store and get Angel. What's, what flavor? Grape? And, it, and, go, and it's just weird. I was like, dude, you don't have to. And they guy go to the store and bring me back two bottles of flavored water. I'm like, Jesus. I said, you know, but that's I, I popped for that. I was really like, holy shit, this is hot. this is awesome. Did you do the motion capture stuff for that and the whole deal, or did they put yeah. it on the screen? No. Yeah, it? no, that shit was horrible, man. That shit is the most, you know, when you play a video game, you don't realize the work that's in it. You know what I mean? When you stand in there and you go, all right, Angel, I need a grunt. Ugh. That's good, but you need to like get it from deep in from your diaphragm. Ugh. Now turn to the left because I think you, you, you're just talking too much in the mic, and you have to grunt and say phrases over and over again. And and you and you're standing there, and you're just like, it sounds the same. And they're like, no, you know, it, it was like that. It, I'm not saying it was a horrible experience, but like I said, once you realize the work that is done for a video game. Because I went through the room afterwards where guys were sitting there playing video games, you know, the testers. And I'm like, bro, you might, you got the most coolest job playing video games. No, man, this shit is... We got to find glitches, and we got to play this screen over and over and over again. And I'm like, oh, man, that sucks. So that, that raises a good question, then. Mm-hmm. A lot of talk has been made about the AEW video game and how it was... One of the most expensive fight forever, I believe it's called one of the most expensive productions of all time. And the recent patch, as the industry insiders uh, refer to it as, or maybe not, maybe that's general nomenclature, but it had a, a list of fixes a mile long. And consequently, it's it's not being played by many people, apparently, uh, you know, around the globe. Do you do you have any understanding as to why that in 2022 or whatever when it came out with that rigorous process being applied in the late 90s how that ended up on the market like that? I'm not gonna lie to you, I really don't know. I mean, oh, perfect. Oh, you like this one? There's me right there and the, doing the pose for the video game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand there. Turn to the right. And there was a big X on the floor. Some fan, I don't know, some fan found that. But anyway, back to your um, your question. I mean, 
dude. I mean, I'd, uh, well, good. I'd say it was. I'd say it was a rushed, a rushed job instead of just taking their time and making a better product. It's kind of what they do on TV as well. Sometimes they just want to regurgitate something out there real quick. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's true. I mean, I mean, yeah, I agree with that 100%. That, that makes sense, you know. But, I mean, um, a lot of people just mark out that, uh, you know, they're in a video game. I wasn't marking out when I was in a video game. But when you realize when you become a businessman, not a fan, then you realize, hey, wait a minute. I'm not getting paid for this shit. You know, and I just signed my fucking life away to this uh, business. Oh, here it is. Do, do, do. I'm going to open my phone. <laughs> Told you, that's why I was looking down. I'm like, I know I have this picture. Uh, see Lita right there, and I'm on the floor. And that's Vito. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So she was my valet at the time. You know, so. Vito, Vito was my first ever pro wrestling guest on this podcast. Yeah. Did you yeah. pay him? No. Okay, good. He always asks for a payday. I was to say, you know, he was nice. Uh, he was really nice. He, he said he said he'd come back on again, but it's been three years now, and we haven't organized anything. So, you know, the best thing about the the leader match that I gave her because after Vito gave her the power driver, and you know, and I had to pull out the ring and um, back, my hands were between her butt cheeks, so I was the first one to ever feel, you know. <laughs> but that was really make, making history. That was making history, man. I got a little taste of you know, you know, Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame booty. <laughs> there you go. That should be in your uh, autobiography someday. Oh, dude, if I had an autobiography, it'd be just a one-page turner, man. Nobody's <laughs> interested. You know, I got some funny stories, but I just don't have anything that's you know interesting, like seven bucks production. I only have seven bucks in my pocket. You know, I don't have no good stories. You know, here's a deep cut though that I've never asked you before. You wrestled Superfly Snuka on an indie show in '98. Do you remember that at all? I remember. I wrestled them many times. I, re- okay. um, I just saw the one in in '98. Uh, uh, how Tommy, was that at that stage of the career? No, that was cool because we were working for Tommy Jeanette. He was a promoter that did a lot of. Um, he used to go to Vegas and do like these fair conventions. So when you go to these, you know, there's a convention for anything, you know, a fucking fair, for, you know, convention for like kilts and, you know, and or wigs or so there was a convention It's for people who like run carnivals and there's, you know, like the new popcorn machine and the cotton candy machine or people, hey, you know, the three legged horse, you know, and stuff like that, you know, so um, he used to sell, you know, his product of professional wrestling for these fairs. So I got hooked up with him and it was always Jimmy Snooker, uh, Bill Eady, Tony Atlas. Um, I'm trying to remember, uh, Tony Atlas, uh, who else was there? Uh, I can't remember everybody, but those are the main thing. And I just laughed because I remember we were in, we were in, um, in Salamanca, New York. At the Dudley Hotel, no pun into Devon, but it was the Dudley Hotel. And it was one of those towns that was stuck in time. You know when you go to one of those towns that the revenue is not good, so everything still looks like 1960s, 1930s. So this town was like, wow, you know, it's like more like a, not a colonial thing, but just like a certain era. So Vito, um, Tommy Jeanette put me in the room with Vito. It was supposed to be three of us. And... um, it was me, Bad Boy Billy Walker, and my and Vito. But anyway, I got there talking to Vito and stuff, and here comes Bad Billy Walker come in. You know, he, his gimmick's a cowboy, and he comes with a fucking saddle. And he, I mean, huge saddle. I had the rope and shit, the burlap and all that, everything, you know, and he throws it on the bed, and Vito's like, um, where's the, where's the saddle going to sleep at? And he's like, well, that's my gimmick, man. He goes, no. I said, hey, you could stay, but the saddle got to glow. This this room is for three people, not you, the saddle, Angel, and me. He goes, well, I can't leave my saddle. This is an expensive saddle. He goes, I don't know what to tell you, man, but you need to either, uh, you know, find another room or or put the saddle in your truck. So just like a comedy, you know, he leaves upset, and Vito's like, fuck, you see this motherfucker bringing in a saddle and shit? So I look, it, he, they didn't have any room available, and he and he was he drove in a pickup 
So like a Western, we look out the window and he fucking did the fucking saddle on the truck, put his head on the thing, put the blanket, took the hat, put it over his face. And you see like, and it was in the fall. So you see leaves just going over thing. And I'm just like, if he was like this motherfucker, you know, <laughs> you know, and I said, how are you going to go get him, man? Let's fuck that. Because fuck him. His saddle will keep him company. <laughs> Random. Yeah, true story. True story. We had some funny moments, man. You know, another one is that he, 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 he um, he, we're doing the show and he's going to wrestle Vito. And Vito's like, you're supposed to be this rough and tough cowboy, but you're wearing spandex and you have ponies on your boots. So his dad made him a pair of boots that didn't look like, you know, the, the four horseman stallion. It looked like a fucking my, my little pony <laughs> on the side of his boots. And he goes, what tough, rough cowboy. Could come out in spandex and ponies on his boots, and then of course he's into Angel. Do you see the, what I'm talking about? I'm like, yeah, Vito. Who? What? Tell me. You know, Black Bart. You know, <laughs> Black Jack Mulligan. <laughs> never had ponies on their boots, bro. This guy was in tears. He, he never got back on the show again because he's like, this fucking Vito man just kept. I was laughing. You know, classics. You know, I got to have ask another you one. This. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, I just have a good story about DeVito. I remember one time DeVito was so gimmicked up. We at the uh, in Wilkesboro at the Best Western, and uh, uh, he took some uh, some heavily medicated products. And um, so I go to we were sharing a room, and I'm walking up the stick, you know, got out the elevator, and guess who's walking down the hallway with a nice bucket? But he's naked. But he's wearing socks though. So he he comes up like he's walking towards me because the ice box is the opposite direction. So I said, Vito, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, I'm getting ice. I said, you put you fucking naked. Why do I have to be dressed to get ice? Point taken. <laughs> and I kept going to the room and um, he went to get ice but naked because he was heavily medicated. That's awesome. Excellent. Yeah. What was your question? I can, yeah, I can have asked. I know you guys have talked about this so many times because it's your first time on this channel. I have to ask like um, how Paul Heyman was to work with and what did you learn from him? I learned a lot from Paul. I mean, the guy was a very intellectual, very caring to, you know, to build your character. Um, I owe Paul a lot in regards to my career. Um, when nobody wanted to give me an opportunity, he's the one that gave me an opportunity. Yeah, I joke about the bounce checks and all that stuff. It's just humor, you know, but what he has given me was 10, 50 times what he owed me. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, like all the boys joke about it, but like I said, he gave me an opportunity. I was on pay-per-view. I was in a video game. You know, like I said, if, if I could step back and look at the positive, but not the financial aspect, I learned a lot from Paul. And he really, when he talked to you, he, he, I mean, this motherfucker was one of those guys, you know, and I'm just using an analogy from Braveheart. He's just writing, men, we're going into battle and we're like, rah, Sparta, you know, <laughs> you know, slapping each other because he had this way of coming across, man, like you were invincible. He could convince you to just eat that piece of shit on the floor and believe it's chocolate. You know, like he is so convincing and that's why we stuck with him so long, you know. Yep. In terms of the. Oh, here we go again. This is an. Do you want to explain that one to Maurice? This is New Jack. Oh, New Jack. No, this is my Joe Budaw from Major Leagues. Every time I, he talks, he comes up. <laughs> and, and, it, and it never fails to throw me off track. <laughs> <laughs> it's my mascot, you know. But in in terms of some of your your noteworthy uh, opponents in ECW, and, and you worked them all. One one guy that I don't think gets a lot of uh, ink or respect or, or whatever you want to call it is Mike Awesome. And you faced him for the title in ECW a couple of times, and he had that uh, ridiculously bad run in WCW, came back for the one-night stand and redeemed himself against uh, Tanaka. But just wanted to know what your uh, experience was working him. Like, for a tremendously huge individual his agility and those matches with spike dudley were uh were classics do you have any particular memories working him oh, i just love the guy man he was he was just one of the 
dude, he was awesome. Uh, Devito didn't really like care for him much. Um, not nothing bad. It's just they didn't. You know, you get that moment when you just just don't click with somebody. But I loved Mike. I mean, he made me laugh. And then when I made him laugh, it was just he he just had this funny laugh. And um, and uh, I mean, the matches were always solid. Uh, there's a I got a clipping of where he was gonna throw you know do the typical over the top rope to the table, you know, and it never happened because I said um. I remember he's like, hey, you know, my gimmick, you know, I take him, you know, you see me do a Tanaka. And, and I said, I said, I said, I seen Asians fly. I seen butterflies, but I'll never see a Negro fly because I ain't doing it. <laughs> so I, I'm not taking that. And that's when, I mean, if you find the footage, it's just Vito, DeVito comes in and pulls my leg and then fall and then we'll beat him up and stuff. But, um, but Mike was, an, an, no pun intended, he was an awesome dude. He, he was a friend. Um, we cracked jokes. Yeah, we we didn't ride the the in you know, the same car together, but you know I consider him a, a friend and somebody to talk to and stuff. And when he passed, you know, from the suicide, you know, it was just you know kind of broke my heart. You know, like man, because he's such a good guy, so caring. But you never know what happens behind closed doors when your spouse, you know, you're arguing and you know they use the kids against you. So you know, I mean, I don't know the whole story, but you know, he had a lot to give. You know, and um. You know, he'd be, I hope one day he'd be put into like some type of Hall of Fame. You know, maybe WWE can just do something because he was in WCW and, you know, he did, he was one of those agile big men. So he should get put in the Hall of Fame, you know. Do you expect a lot of ECW guys to be hanging around Philadelphia come April time, seeing as WrestleMania is there? I'm sure there could be some conventions and stuff going on. Is that going to be something you're going to be involved with? I hope. Do you know any connections? You know, I've got a few actually. I've got a few. <clears throat> no, I mean, yeah, I mean, if that's gonna happen, I would love to go. Um, yeah. that's something that, um, I mean, it's it, not because of a payday, it's because I see my friends yeah. when I hear like, hey, CW is gonna be there, and Danny Doring, and Roadkill, and you know, Devin Storm, and Ace Darling, and those guys, even Steve Carino, if he shows up, so I could give him shit, you know, um, it's just good to see him because you know. It, it's just it's a, a moment in time that's just like it's putting the band back together philosophy you know and stuff um like carino like when, when i knew carino he he was skinny um devin's uh crowbar was devin storm ace darling was ace darling and um i remember when we we're in ecw again i remember him when he was nobody and he got mad at me one day because i was like you know, you know, you believe in that fucking king of old school too very well. Because I remember when you used to stock milk on the fucking Wawa's, and um, you know, you need to get yourself. Yeah, you know, he, he didn't like to. He, some wrestlers don't like to be called out of and re, put back in reality. You know what I mean? You know, it's like if you if you knew the great Muda and he used to sell noodles on the corner in Tokyo, and you know, and stuff. Oh, get home! Hey, go home. Get your shine box. You know, motherfucker. I'm gonna kill you from fucking <laughs> good fellas. Good fellas, you know, like you know, you he didn't like to be called out because of the shine box. It's the same thing when you put them back in reality, they get kind of butt hurt in regards of you know, people hold them in a high esteem and you're calling their, you know, I wasn't a cook, I wasn't a you know, I didn't stock milk. Bitch, yes, you did. It's not like you came came out of the womb like with the fucking king of old school. You know, yeah, the kingpin. Like, uh, Homicide calls me Spanish Angel because that was my original wrestling name, and I used to work in the mail room at a law firm. So if I was a superstar, he'd be, he'll call me out and say, hey, motherfucker, I remember when you used to deliver mail to the attorneys, and you were just some jabroni called Spanish Angel. You know, remember when Johnny wanted to call you the, the Spanish Flamingo? Shut the fuck up. Don't bring that up, you know, like that, you know? It keeps you grounded. Do you have any? And I know we're we're gonna have to make this into a uh, a part two. But in in terms of your your overall uh, career in the business, I I don't think I've 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 asked you this before. But do you do you have anything that you would have liked to do, or more importantly, still could do? I would have loved to do is I wish I was there when when uh, New Jack threw Vic Grimes off the scaffold 
And when he landed, I could come out and go, like, slick, turn out the lights. The party's over. Because <laughs> you know? Vic hates me. I mean, Vic loves me, but he hates me because I just give him so much shit. You know, but um, I, I don't know, dude. I mean, the only thing, the only reason I don't really wrestle much because I feel sometimes that I, I'm not the same person that I used to be. And, you know, like I can't jump as high as I used to be or do certain moves that I used to do. And sometimes I feel like I give the fans injustice, the injustice of pretending to be the kingpin and not being the kingpin. So I do want to do certain things. Yeah, I'll go to shows and I'll wrestle. But when I watch the footage, you know, sometimes I'm like, ah, dude, you know, it's just I, it, I just look to me. I'm, I'm a, my worst critic. So it's just um, when I want when I walk through that curtain, I want the fans to see the guy that they saw in you know during that time. You know, mm-hmm. um, I see old rest uh, the Randy the Ram thing, man. You you know you you you're doing main main events in big arenas, and all of a sudden you're back at the bingo hall, you know, um, getting paid in fucking hot dogs because the promoter didn't have a big house, you know. So that's why I'm just very selective of the shows I do. But when I find out is the guys like oh like CW and all those other guys. Um, you know, that's when I, I'll go. And also, hey, I just want to say, you know, CW's dad passed away, you know, and I just want to send out my condolences. I spoke to him on Facebook, but I mean, if you fans don't know about it, I mean, you know, his dad was his everything and, uh, you know, he's always in my prayers. So just want to let you know, you know, CW's a good dude. Great guy too. Maurice, we, we seem to have come to the end of this particular amount of time. Do you have any, any final thoughts or comments for the Kingpin as this will be part one, part two, I'm sure down in the near future. I'm just thinking of what you, what you said there, Kingpin about getting in the ring and obviously getting older. And then you looking back at saying, I'm not, maybe, maybe I'm not the same guy I was. And obviously that happens everyone with father time. So I'm just wondering, would you, uh, have a phone call with Ric Flair and tell him to hang it up as well. No, I would never do that. But but we just, I mean, I'm not going to put nobody on blast, but we just had a conversation about an individual that we were like, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that that right there says it all. I, mean, I know the fans are not going to understand it because, again, I'm friends with the guy, but um, when you first saw it, you're like, oh, my God. You, see, that's the thing. Oh, when Scott Hall came out and he's doped yeah, up. You know, it, again, God rest his soul. But I'm just saying, like, I just want to give the fans what they they paid for. And sometimes I just don't feel that I could do it. But I do it. It's just, but I'm my worst critic when I look at the video. I'm like, I could have been better, you know? Yeah. It reminds me of, like, remember Steve Austin came back at WrestleMania two years ago now. And they they made the match suit him. They never even announced it as a match. He had a street fight with Kevin Owens. That was the way they pulled it off. Like, you know, it, it depends on what way you're, you're booking matches as well, I guess. Oh, yeah. And then Vix fucks it up by taking the most shittiest thunder in history. Oh, that was on night two. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah. And, that, and that's real bad. I mean, he, all he had to do was, I mean, that's all you could do is laugh. Yeah. But I mean, trying to, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, shit. I would just let it go. I would have crotched Vince this way. And, uh, but he had to hit the gimmick. And, you know, and like I said, it's just, those are the things you're like, shit. Mm-hmm. you know, and stuff. Mr. Step. It's like, you know, anyway, it's just that when you want to see your, your favorite stars, they got to make sure they're on point. And that's just my opinion. That's why, you know, I'm getting after my surgery, you know, I'm doing a little bit of the walking. I'm going to get a strong, you know, this $6 million man, you know, we can rebuild them to bigger, stronger, faster, you know, maybe get some tape, pull, you know, pull the skin back a little bit, you know, <laughs> So, but yeah, man, like I said, um, I'll do shows for the fans, but like I said, I want to make sure that I'm giving them my all. Well, we certainly appreciate your, your time tonight, Kingpin. We have a big, like I said, not to, to plug it again, but we have a big Christmas show coming up on the shooting from the hip podcast. If you're watching this live in around December the 8th, it will be on December the 12th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, live on the Hannibal TV. But do you have anything else that you'd like to put over in terms of where the fans can can find you and keep up with all the happenings in your life? 
Well, you just mentioned it, man. They could catch us on shooting from the hip. You know, I'm all over YouTube uh, with uh, Jack Hilby, you know, and um, like I said, I'm not that hard to find on Facebook, you know. I mean, there's a couple of freaks out there that ask me stupid questions and, you know, so I don't reply. But, I mean, but I, I talk. It's just sometimes it's just like, this guy is crazy, you know. So, but like I said, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on uh, TikTok. You can find me on um X, you know, X. I was gonna say Twitter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm there. I mean, if you send me a message, I will respond. But I don't post shit because I don't want to get thrown in a jail, you know, for, for all the comments and stuff. But yeah, I mean, I'm easily found. Awesome, Maurice. Final words to you, sir. Final words. Uh, enjoy your Christmas your Christmas party next week, lads. And we have ours. I think next Thursday night, Miracle on 69th Street with Mario Mancini. That's going to be a big one. Mario yeah. is, uh, Mario is, uh, I don't know if you've caught any of the, the shows, but he is a staple of this channel and has uh, many, many interesting anecdotes and stories and is quite a fan favorite on the channel. So, yeah, that's cool, man. I mean, Maurice, what do you do on Christmas? Do you like crack a bottle of proper 12 and, and, um, do you know what? I actually, I actually had, just had a glass of proper 12 right before we came on because I was feeling very tired. <laughs> well, Dude, day, my goal one day is to go to Ireland. I definitely want to go because I've been everywhere. That's the one place I've never been, just to go. You know, I got a kilt. It's black, but it looked like I'm naked. <laughs> black, I'm black. Don't. <laughs> we'll, we'll fund that with all the YouTube money that we're making from our various podcast endeavors, and we'll do a live one over there. But until next time, fans, this has been another edition of the Cheap Beat Productions Wrestling Podcast. With the kingpin, Angel Medina. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Stay tuned for part two in the future. Take care, everyone. <laughs>